Hey everyone, Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today we're going to be working on this 1999 Carrera 911 behind us, also known as a 996. Today we're going to be showing you how to replace the front brakes on this vehicle. A couple of reasons why you might want to look into that. First of all, as we all know, brakes do not last forever. They are indeed a wear item. Typically in a car like this, you're going to want to replace them every 30 to 50,000 miles, all dependent on your driving style. A couple of things to look out for if you're considering doing this job is one, if your brakes are old or worn or you don't know when the last time they were replaced, there's a couple of easy ways to check that. First of all, looking at the rotor through the wheel spokes, you can take a look at them and give them a feel. If you have a lip around the outer edge of the rotor, then more than likely they're pretty well worn. Another thing you may be experiencing is a pulsation in your brake pedal. That can be due to the rotors being warped. One thing to keep in mind though is that control arm bushings, if they're bad, may also give you a similar feeling. So inspect everything while you're in there. As we all know, pads do indeed wear. And as they wear, they get closer and closer to their metal backing plate. Now these cars are equipped with wear sensors on every corner. So if you're unsure, take a look at your dash. If you have a brake pad light on, then more than likely the sensor has been nicked, meaning that your pads are nearing the end of their life. Now, today we're gonna to be using a Zimmerman Techstar kit, which we'll link below for you guys. It includes everything you need to do this brake job, including Techstar pads, the pad shims, two wear sensors, one for each corner, and a hardware kit. Two things that we don't include in that kit, though, are the rotor set screws, which we'll show you as we install them, and the caliper carrier bolts. These you're gonna to wanna to replace every time you remove the caliper. Now, before we get started on the car, let's take a look at the tools we're gonna to need for this job. And now onto the tools needed for this front brake DIY. For this job, you're gonna need a couple basic tools. We have a torque wrench. This is a half inch drive one. We have a half inch drive breaker bar. This is used to break the caliper carrier bolts off of the caliper. A 3 8 ratchet. We have a punch, a flashlight so we can see, of course. A 19 millimeter socket to get our wheels off. We have a couple sockets here. We have a T55 for the new caliper carrier bolts. We have a hex 10 millimeter to get the old caliper carrier bolts off. And we have a 10 millimeter socket. This one's used to get off the hard line bracket. On top of that, we have a caliper hook, a wire brush to clean off our hubs, a pick tool used to remove pins, wear pad sensors, miscellaneous, a couple screwdrivers, specifically a Phillips and a flathead, and a hammer. And then optional, we're using an impact gun to get off our wheels. Now that we got the tools covered, let's head on over to the vehicle and get started. Thank you for joining us at the car. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna get the wheel off the vehicle. We're working on the lift today. This is a job that you can do in your garage floor or in your driveway. Whatever you do, just make sure you're doing it safely. If you're working on the ground, use a jack and jack stance. We're gonna start by taking off the 19 millimeter lug bolts. Our car has a security lock on it, so we're gonna start with that one. Now that we have the wheel off, we're gonna start by removing our wear sensor. First, we're gonna disconnect it from the vehicle by popping up this metal tab right here. And we're gonna go ahead and just disconnect. You're gonna have a metal clip that holds it in place here as well. Pull that out. If you're lucky, you're still gonna have this plastic clip retaining the sensor in. You're gonna to wanna to get rid of that too. We're gonna to continue removing the sensor. You're gonna have one portion that feeds into your inboard pad. This one's routed upwards on the brake pad retaining clip and then their outboard one. Now that we have our wear sensor removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove this cotter pin that holds our retaining pin in. I'm just gonna use a pick tool to get it out. Our brake kit cut does come with a new one, so you can discard this one. If you're not replacing this, go ahead and keep it. Now we can go ahead and remove the pin that holds the retaining clip into place. We're gonna use a 3 16 punch to punch it through. As you get closer to getting the pin out, you wanna be mindful that this is loaded with tension. So 
If you can, use your punch or tool to retain it in place, otherwise it will shoot out at you. You want to note the orientation of this little hook that holds the wear sensor in place. On the passenger side, it is pointing upwards, so we'll install our new clip the same way. Bam, baby. Now we're ready to remove our pads. I'm gonna use this flathead screwdriver to get some leverage on them to push the pistons back into the caliper. If you're at the track, this is as far as you need to go to get your pads in and out if you're not gonna be replacing your rotors. However, we are gonna be replacing everything, so we're not gonna to worry too much about hurting the rotor and jamming our flathead screwdriver in here. So just be mindful if you're doing this on the track, you're gonna to wanna to get the pads out safely. You can use something like this Lyle tool to compress the pistons into place without having to remove the caliper. I'm using my flathead screwdriver to pry into the slotted portion of the pad where the pin goes through, just to give myself some leverage and start pushing that piston back a little bit. Once I have a little bit of room in here, in between the pad and the rotor, I can then shove my flathead screwdriver and start compressing the piston back. I'll go ahead and get this pad out. Garbage. And then work on the outboard pad. You get this pad out of the way. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper. We're gonna have two 10 millimeter hex bolts that hold it into place. I'm gonna switch to a 3 8 ratchet just to speed up the removal process. Before we go any further, I just wanted to point something out to you guys. Porsche has since revised the caliper carrier bolt. It no longer has a 10 millimeter hex head. Instead, it uses a Torx head. So if you get a replacement, you're gonna know if yours are still original, they're gonna look a little bit different. Don't be alarmed, it is the same bolt. We'll give you the torque specs and the sizing when we go to install it. Before we finish removing this last caliper carrier bolt, you wanna go ahead and remove this 10 millimeter bolt that holds the hardline bracket to our assembly here. That way the caliper has some room to move and be hooked up once we free it up. I'm gonna take our caliper hanging tool, hook it onto a spring there, and hang up our caliper. Now that we have our caliper hung up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the old pad shims. It should just pull right out. That's what they're gonna look like. Our brake kit includes new ones, so you can just toss these. And before we go any further, we're just gonna give this a spritz with brake clean, just to give us a little bit of a cleaner working area. When it's not your brake clean. Now we got our caliper off to the side. We're gonna go ahead and remove these two rotor set screws. If you guys have seen some of my other videos, you know I like to shock these before I get them off, just to free up any corrosion. Take a hammer and my tool, give it a couple hits, and off she comes, baby. Same thing with the second one. Give it a couple hits. Boom, baby. And then we can take our rotor off. Before we go any further and start reassembly, we're gonna go ahead and clean up this hub. I'm gonna use this wire brush. You can use a wire wheel on a drill, on a Dremel, emery cloth, or sandpaper. The goal is just to get it cleaned. Before we install our new rotor on, I like to use a little bit of ceramic paste on here just to avoid the potential of the rotor seizing to the hub. We do live in New England, so it's more uh, probable for that to happen here. Now we're ready to install our rotors. I like to put on a fresh pair of gloves. My hands were getting pretty dirty. The reason for that is these new Zimmerman rotors are zinc coated. You can't really blast these with brake clean the way you would a traditional bare rotor. So if you can, try to keep your mitts off of it, work cleanly, let's get this thing installed. You Just wanna snug this one in. You don't wanna crank it down yet until you have your second one in place. Now that both are in, go ahead and tighten them down. If you're gonna to torque these, it's gonna to be about seven foot pounds at most. We're just gonna hand tighten them for today. That's all they need. Now that we have our rotor in place, we're ready to install our brake pad shims. They're very simple and pretty straightforward. These little guys go into the bore of the piston. Just like that. And same thing on the other side. Just like that. 
Now we're gonna grab our new carrier bolts and we're gonna line this up and get it installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and unhook our caliper. Don't forget to remove that hook later. And line it up into place. And take our new caliper carrier bolts and just get them started by hand. For these, you're gonna need a T55. Now that we have them snug in by hand, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and torque them down to 63 foot-pounds. Now that our caliper's bolted up, we're gonna go ahead and put this 10 millimeter bolt back into the hard line bracket. If you wanna to torque this bolt down, it's gonna be about five to seven foot-pounds. We're just gonna snug it in by hand as it's not a very tight bolt. Now we're ready to install our pads. We have our shims in place. They're pushed back towards the caliper. Let's slide these guys in. There's one. And there is two. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our pad retaining clip as well as the pin that holds it into place. You wanna note the pin has a hole for the cotter pin that locks it in. You wanna try to put it in in a way that you can access it once it is fully in place. Oh yeah. And then last but not least, we're gonna install the cotter pin itself. We're gonna put our cotter pin back in place. There it is. Now we're ready to install our wear sensor and wrap up this brake job. Just like our old sensor, our new sensor is gonna be notched to key itself into the pads on both sides. You wanna make sure you do that as you install it as well as route the wire over this retaining clip here. We start with the outboard pad first, and then do our inboard pad sensor. And then just like the rear brakes, the front brakes also have a notch in them in the caliper, so you can line your wear sensor through. And we're gonna route it back through into this holder here and then plug it back in, just like that. And then lock our metal tab into place, and that's it. Now that we have our brakes on, we can go ahead and put our wheel back on, along with our 19 millimeter lug bolts, and torque them down to 96 foot-pounds. And there you have it. That concludes the front brake job replacement on this 996 behind us. As you can see, pretty basic tools is all you need. This is a job that you can do on the ground, in your garage, or on a lift. Overall, not a bad job. If you guys like what you saw today, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did or the products we use, leave those in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and want to see more like it, please consider subscribing. We make new DIYs all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.